Good morning, friends. First, an apology that this week's devotions are running a day late. I still plan to do five, uh, so I hope you can fit them in from Tuesday to Saturday or whenever you wish to do so. We have quite a library of these devotions now, for which my thanks to Alec, Jeremy, David and Phil. Perhaps you've been able to fill in on Monday with one of the ones you've missed or listen to one of the short testimonies on our YouTube channel. I would encourage you to make the most of this increasing resource. This week, though, we're going to Athens. I can't fly there, so we're going with the Apostle Paul to this great ancient city that remains such a magnet for the modern tourist. We're going to spend some time this week with him in an incident that Luke records in the book of Acts in chapter 17. Even in Paul's day, it was an ancient city that traded on its proud reputation. It was the intellectual and cultural capital of the Roman Empire, the city that gave birth to democracy, a place famed for philosophy, the arts and literature. Many of the great buildings that survive even today were already several centuries old by the time that Paul arrived in Athens. They were the ancient equivalents of tourist attractions even then. Now, as we come to this story, we find that, like many of us just now, Paul was not where he planned or wanted to be. In Berea, where he'd just come from, the crowds had turned nasty towards him. So the Christians in that place hurried him out and along the coast to Athens, where he was unknown. There, at least until he opened his mouth, he would be safe. So Paul was alone. He wanted to meet up with his companions and to get back to his mission up north in Macedonia, from which he'd had to flee. If it were me, I think I would decide that these were good enough reasons to keep my head down and do the tourist bit. See the sights, take some pictures, relax a little before getting back to the work. How often do you get to see something so wondrous as Athens, then or now? And when your plans are disrupted, you're thrown onto the back foot, it doesn't seem unreasonable to step back, take stock and look after yourself a little uh, as you regather uh, your perspective. But Paul doesn't do that. Luke tells us that he spent his short time in that place preaching the gospel. And the church has benefited hugely from the fact that he did. For what he does here models how we can share our Christian faith in a culture that is dominated by a non or even anti-Christian view of the world, of human beings and of the God who made us. He shows us how to share Christ in a proud and sophisticated culture that is utterly and even proudly ignorant of God in a world that lives by its own made up and endlessly changing moral values and delights in singing, I did it my way. In other words, he will help us to share Christ in 21st century Britain. For today, I'm just going to read the passage and in the remaining four devotions, if the Lord spares us, we're going to linger over four M's. Paul's motive to evangelise the Athenians, the message that he preached, the method that he employed, and finally, the unchanging means by which he did so. But for today, just listen to the story from Acts chapter 17, from verse 16. While Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, 
to an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. And he does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. A few men became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. Let's pray. Father, Please turn our hearts to faith in you as the living God, through your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us true repentance, and so make us ready for the day when he will judge the world with justice. And grant that we, even when like Paul, we might find ourselves in unexpected and unwanted circumstances. Grant that we might share the good news of Jesus and the resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen.